you this are not able to will join, now be recorded. If you're not able to join us uh, during the session, um, you will find this later on uh, on YouTube. Um, and I want to give a special shout out to uh, Gary Ewan Park, who is in the chat here as well, who is one of the developers of Chocolaty. And I would like to introduce my uh, co-hosts or co-presentation uh, guys as well. Um, first of all, Jos Malipart, who is one of the vanguards. Go ahead. Jos. Uh, yeah, my name is Jos Malipart. I live in the Netherlands, uh, a vanguard. Uh, became enthusiastic enthusiastic about chocolate tea solution uh, last year when uh, Maurice day uh, a month of uh, chocolate tea when uh, with uh, uh, a question every day uh, it was great to join so uh, thanks for the invitation for this time you're welcome Scott hi I'm Scott Patterson I live in Winnipeg Canada and I am very new to chocolatey, but I saw some of the stuff it can do in some of Maurice's posts, and I'm just getting started on it. And Chris? Hello, everyone. My name is Chris Arsenault. Um, I've been at Veeam now for about four and a half years. Uh, I'm a solutions architect focused on automation and orchestration. Uh, as far as chocolatey goes, um, I've, been a, I've used it a very great deal um, for years now. However, I've yet to actually put on the developer hat as far as chocolate is concerned and write stuff. So I'm definitely looking forward uh, to the session with you, Marie. Cool. Well, yeah, my name is uh, Maris Kefner. I'm the automat automation desk leader as well as a Vanguard, a legend, and uh, a chocolatey community moderator, package maintainer, and whatnot. Um, so, uh, well, let's get into it. It all started with this in the call for this uh this event um a vanguard of legend and mvp jos scott and crit here walked into an automation shop um, and the legend said to the vanguard and mvp do you know how to make a chocolatey package and the vanguard and mvp said no but the guy behind the desk said i do so this is what we are going to do today i'm going to instruct the guys here on how to create their own chocolatey package. Um, well, we have been given a task by our perfectly uh, green manager here saying we need to deploy Veeam agent on 100 plus new machines. However, we can only deploy using pre-installed agent. Can you assist us? So obviously we are going to use chocolatey because that's what we are doing here. Um, the idea is that we are going to create, um, if you have followed along last year, two kinds of packages here. Um, we are going to create a software installation package and a software configuration package, um, which is two of the, the, the possibilities that chocolatey can do instead of uh, other package managers that are out there. So, the steps to take at first we need to define our goal our goal in during the session is create chocolatey packages to install veeam agent for windows and configure the distribution group that's our goal our end goal that once we have run our chocolatey packages this should be be done install veeam agent for windows and the, the, the distribution group should be configured so to, we need to define the task. Uh, if you followed along um, during Veeam on, these are the same goals that I described back, back then. Define the task you need to take to achieve your goal in your own language. In this case, we're doing English. Um, while that not, that's not my own language, but for um, uh, the ease uh, of communication here, we're going to stick with English. Um, we need to install the dependencies and according to the documentation that will be .NET Framework and CRT um, for Veeam Agent for Windows. Uh, we need to install Veeam Agent for Windows and then we need to configure the Veeam Agent for, for Microsoft Windows with the distribution group. And we 
optionally could synchronize the status. That should be done automatically by Veeam Agent of Windows, but to speed up the process, we could synchronize the status. We're, I, I'm not sure if we are going to do that. It depends on the time that we have, but that's an option. Then we need to search in the product doc documentation, the internet uh, on how to do the, the set task. So docsochocolatey.org and helpcenter.team.com, including the readme text that we will uh, be getting later on. And that we need to write our code. That will be in our demo. demo. And we will need to test our code. That will be in the demo as well. So the required tools that we need to achieve this on our machines will be obviously chocolatey. We need to ensure that on the machine that we are developing this, we have chocolatey installed. This is the link uh, to go to chocolatey. We need to install Visual Studio Code. We are going to use Visual Studio Code to um, create the chocolatey packages just because it's an it's an easy lightweight IDE. Um, in theory, you could do it with a notepad or any other tool that you like, but for the ease right now, we are going to use Visual Studio Code. Um, once installed with once we have installed chocolatey, it's just easy install with chocolate install VS Code. Then uh, oh, and this is linked to the package itself. Then we are going to install the, the chocolatey VS Code extension, which is optional, optional, um, but it gives you some information and some handy tools that you can use during uh, your VS Code experience. Chocolate install VS uh, chocolate install chocolatey dash VS Code. Um, and we need an internal repository. Now we are not going to do that right now with any fancy things like a, a, a NuGet feed, but um, we are going to use a local file folder um, as a file share. I would advise against this for your production environment, uh, but for the ease of um, this presentation, we are going to use a simple file share. Um, also, the packages that we are creating are for um, your own company or your own organization and not to be shared on the community repository because they will contain information that are that is only uh, applicable for your uh, own company and your, your own environment. So they, these should not be uploaded to the uh, community repository. Um, oh, and if you want to know how to host your own packages, there's a link as well. This presentation will be shared later on on the automation, so you can find the links there as well. So, yeah, this is a really short introduction. Are we going to the demo uh, right now? And um, I will explain to the, the 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 Vanguard, the Legend, and the MVP on how to do this. Um, so let me switch to my. VBR server. Sorry, it's a bit dark right now because I need to log in. Uh, so we are here in a blank, newly installed Veeam Backup or Replication server. Um, what you do is you're going to, we are going to create our protection group. Let's assume this is your production environment and you have created a lot of jobs and whatnot. Um, for now, this is basically what we're going to do. We're going to create a, a protection group. And this protection group, let's call it uh, Choco uh, Lati uh, uh, December. Month. And I don't like these descriptions, so I just remove it. You can create a description if you want. And the type will be computers with pre-installed backup agents in this case. Um, we are going to create the Microsoft package and we are going to export this to the VBR server. Well, let's make a new folder here, agents. I only have a C drive here. Don't do this in production, uh, but this is just for demo purposes only. And this is basically what we are going to do. Um, okay. Mm, sure. I like I said. I just basically installed the feedback of our application server. I didn't do anything with it, um, and apparently I don't have a configuration backup. 
Um, so that's about it. What we need to do right now on this server, we should have a document here inside our C drive in the folder agents. Can't work with me. Windows, there's a README file. Basically, this tells us the steps that we need to take to achieve our goal. Now, I'm going to cheat a, a really, really, really tiny bit uh, because we are going to fetch this package from the internet instead of creating our own. That saves us a bit of time. Um, and we are going to skip CRT because we are using any Windows versions newer than the operating systems mentioned here. So I don't think we need the CRT, uh, but we are going to create a Veeam agent for Windows package. And then create another package to configure Veeam agent for Windows. So um, I'm going to switch now to my chocolatey machine, which obviously just locked. Yeah, sure. As well. This machine, oh, this machine has has done nothing, and apparently I don't have internet. Oh, yeah. Um, I hope it just it's just an icon. Let's try. Uh, so we're going to yeah we have internet. Chocolatey.org slash install. On this page, it tells you how to install Chocolatey. Let's move it to dark mode a bit because it burns my eyes. Um, this step is optional. You can subscribe to the Chocolatey newsletter. And below here, there is this command that you can copy and install Chocolatey using a PowerShell in administrator mode. Um, I've done this a hundred times. I know the script. I trust the script. Um, if you don't read the script before you do and understand what it's doing, uh, but basically what it's going to do is it downloads Chocolatey and it installs it, including all dependencies. Um, again, never trust anything you download from the internet and, unless you know what you're doing. Um, so make sure that make sure of that. <clears throat> so, so you don't think YOLO install is is, is uh, advised there, huh? Well, I know the script, so I, I trust it, but uh, YOLO install is never anything <laughs> you should do. Uh, that's how you get infected. <laughs> that's how you get infected. That's how you get ransomware. Now, I, <laughs> now I'm now i not saying uh, Chocolatey will give you ransomware or anything, but uh, never trust but verify. So we have Chocolatey installed right now. We need to restart the PowerShell uh, real quick, just to, be, to ensure that everything is in there. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to install VS Code. Uh, so Choco, in, oh, I cannot type this evening. Install VS, right, I said I cannot find. By doing this, I'm using the Chocolatey Community Repository, um, and I'm accepting that the Choc Chocolatey Community Repository is a safe repository to download from. Um, Chocolatey here asked me, do you want to run this script? Um, you can press P for print, and it shows you what it does. Um, do you want to run the script? So they even um, suggest you trust but verify. Um, all packages on the community repository are moderated, um, so not uh, they should and and check for viruses, so they should be safe. But famous last word should be. So after this, we are going to install the chocolatey. Um, uh, VS Code extension. So, and then, sorry, community 
www.chocolatee.com slash packages. So on this page, um, come again. No, I don't want to launch a game. Okay, maybe I made a typo. Oh, chocolatee.org, I'm sorry. Um, let's go here to community and then go to packages as well. Uh, find packages here. So this is basically uh, the same URL I wanted to try to go to, but I made a typo. Um, thank you, Gary. Um, so if you don't know the package that you're looking for, um, I'm looking for chocolatey VS Code. There's this chocolate install chocolatey dash VS Code, um, as well as a possibility to include it into a package builder, which is a really great functionality that uh, has been created recently, um, which allows you to create a script. Um, look into that if you want. Um, we're going to install that extension, and basically that will, then we are ready to get started. And yes, again, trust but verify. If you are not familiar with the uh, command line, you can go to, to the package page as well, scroll down here into files, and it shows you all the files that are included within the package. And you can verify the code there as well. Okay, so we have VS Code here now installed. Um, this is expected, this is a, a deprecation warning from uh, Visual Studio itself. It's, it shows red, but it's good. <clears throat> so. oh. I'm creating a code folder here. And you have a really, oh, well, oh, that's not updated yet. Um, yeah, that's fine, whatever. So we have Visual Studio Code here, install, and we are going to open a folder, in this case, and that will be C code, there. So, uh, yes, I trust the order, I'm the order. Um, the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to create a new package. So we type in Choco new, and that will be um, the agent. Now this package already exists on the community repository, but we are going to create a new empty package called Veeam agent. What it does, it, it uh, creates the template uh, that is built in into the chocolatey uh, code, um, which allows us to create a new package. It generates this XML file with all kinds of information. Um, and oh, let me make this one really a bit bigger. And it's already uh, ent entered the ID of the package, which is Veeam agent, because that was what we provided in the command. Um, it wants you to enter a version. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to copy over that agent folder. And I'm going to cheat a bit by going to the C drive. Uh, we are going to copy over this folder into our desktop. And we are going to view in this folder the version number. We already have the version number here. So we are going to use this version number as our package version, because this is the version number of the Veeam agent, right? Um, on the community repository, this needs to be, uh, be changed, uh, uh, including some other parameters here as well. Just read through it if you want. Um, but for now, this is basically what is the minimum requirements to uh, make this a package for your own internal repository. 
I would still advise to include all the stuff that is is in there just for your own um, in, for your own information and your own uh, inf uh, you know, future self. Basically, including the documentation URL and mailing list URL if you have those. Um, but this is basically the minimum required changes that you need to do for your own internal repository. <clears throat> Um, this to-do file contains all the information that you need to do for a uh, repository. It's a long text, it's fine. Um, so the next thing that we are going to do is we're going to delete the before modify because we are not going to use the before modify in this case. And we are going to delete the chocolate uninstall because we are not going to do uh, any uninstallation because it's all an MSI and an MSI can be automatically uninstalled by chocolate. So we're going to delete this file as well. Now we have the chocolatey install. Um, there is a lot of comments here. Um, and I'm just going to be really easy about that and just delete that. Um, at first, we want to ensure that if something goes wrong, the package will stop installing. Makes sense, right? You don't want the installation of the package to continue when things fail. So we are setting the error preference, error action preference for PowerShell on stop. We're going to define our tools there, which is um, the invocation folder of the, the package um, in the tool folder. I Actually, it's the where the PowerShell file is. And what we are going to do is we are going to put those two MSIs, uh, I think these, these two, inside that tools folder. Now this is, again, for your own repository, for your own location. You cannot share this on the community repository because we are not allowed to redistribute the Veeam agent for Windows outside of your organization according to Veeam's license. So um, you're able to, you're allowed to download it. Um, so you could create this package to download the files um, or use it like this with the embedded files. Um, and you know, we don't have the URL, so we are going to remove these and we are going to say, oh, the file type should be MSI or MSI lowercase, I, I believe, because we have an MSI. Um, this allows the um, chocolatey installers, the chocolatey, um, sorry, the chocolatey commandlets to understand what kind of software they are installing. With an EAC, they handle it differently compared to an MSI or a zip. Or an MSU. And we are going to say file is, and we are going to cheat a bit here, dollar, column, dollar tools, there, backslash, and then lazy me, replace, I've copied this file name. Uh, Like this and we are going to do the same with file 64 which should be the 64 well this way we have created the possibility to install this on a 32-bit and a 64-bit environment um, if you're only installing on 64-bit, um, which most likely will be nowadays, you could omit this one. But my advice, keep this in. Um, checksums are not required at this point. So we're going to remove that one. And the silent arcs, 
is a great play, a great start right now. Um, I'm going to remove this one. Um, but this is not everything that we need. And we are going to define valid exit codes. Um, zero is the, the good exit code, the 3010 and 1641. You can look them up, but those are valid exit codes as well. I, be, I believe that 3010 meets, mean, uh, means you need a reboot. And I can't remember from the top of my head what 1641 is. Um, but yeah, there. There is a chance that you will get the 1603, which most likely, Chris, you know as well, is the mother of all exit codes mm -hmm. uh, in MSI uh, world, um, which basically says something went wrong, please check the log files. So that's why this part of the command is in there and we are going to change it into, uh, no, we're going to stay, keep this because it has the package name, which will be veeam-agent and the package version, which will be 6.1 point something automatically. And it will create a log file because if something goes wrong, we can read that log file and see what went wrong. And we can say to our customers that install these packages, okay, give me that log file in the support ticket and we will check out what's, what went wrong. Um, we can remove this part as well. Um, and we need some extra silent arcs, right, Chris? I don't remember them exactly off the top of my head. Um, our yeah. documentation does a good job, though. Yeah, exactly. But I'm going to cheat because I know them. Uh, <laughs> well, I've got them <laughs> written down. Um, and that would be... If I remember correctly, these. Oh, that didn't work. Paste. But if you need to, you can always find that on helpcenter.veeam.com. Oh. There's the direct link, buddy. Ah, perfect. Uh, copy link. And edit paste. There we are. An unattended installation of Veeam Agent for Windows. And I think this is top three XEs. This is the XE version and not the MSI version, um, but I think the, those are the same. And maybe you need the silent one as well. I don't think so. The silent usually is, well, we can add it. It, it shouldn't harm, uh, but check and, before, uh, check and verify uh, because this QN and no restart should automatically do that stuff as well um, for MSI. Um, and if you don't know, there's this tool called Orca, which is a package as well that I, I maintain. I'm not sure if it still works. It should work. I haven't tested it in a while. Um, but this Orca, pack, Orca software, maybe you know that one, Chris. I do. Uh, is an amazing tool that gives you the possibility to look into a um, MSI and see what's in there. Um, and another thing that might be nice to add is that if you are running the chocolatey for bishops version, which I'm not running on this virtual machine, um, the chocolatey for bishops business version gives you the possibility to um, create a package and automatically show you the uh, details what's in that MSI with all the silent parameters, all the parameters and all the, 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 the variables that you can add as well. Um, because this is an MSI error. I don't think we can, we should use the slashes there. Um, but basically what you do is you open the um, MSI. Now let's pick this 64 bit. And you should be able to find 
and I always need to search where it is. Um, I think it's the properties. Yeah. Um, you can see what, what kind of properties you can provide with this um, MSI. It, it essentially allows you to peek under the covers for the MSI, which is an install file, right? Yeah. Uh, and then right. if you want to make uh, uh, changes, it allows you to create what's called transform files so that during your installation, you can enact certain changes and whatnot. Um, yeah. There, there is one other thing in the Veeam documentation I wanted to highlight on that same page you were at there, Maurice, in that sure. our documentation includes uh, additional exit codes, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so you see 1,000, that means good, right? Mm -hmm. However, uh, we provide additional color uh, for those other ones, 1001, 1002, right? And so that's something else like additional. We're probably not going to, we're not going to do that today, but additionally, you could program uh, Chocolatey how to interact, how to respond to these other uh, exit codes and whatnot. Exactly. Um, basically, uh, Chocolatey should uh, break if migration has failed. It should and should not accept this as a valid installation. Um, however, these are still EXE dependencies. <coughs> um, these were probably not the, the right one. And I'm trying to find if I can find the uh, specific ones that is are are required for the MSI and I'm I'm not seeing them like I I usually see them unfortunately so for now I'm just going to try and kind of yellow it to see if it says yeah it failed um and we're not doing a zip package and we're not doing anything else with this one code so we're going to delete it right now but basically this should be enough to get yourself started to install your Veeam agent. Um, it, this is all the code that you need to install Veeam agent. Um, aside from that, you need to define the dependencies. That's something we didn't do. Um, and dependencies are defined in this metadata, metadata here. Um, you can define the ID with a minimum version. You can define the ID with an exact version with uh, the straight brackets around it. And you can say minimum version and a maximum version, inclusive and exclusive, depending on uh, the straight brackets or the, the rounded brackets, or just say a package ID. And as an example, the chocolatey core extension has been added here to allow a minimum version of 1.1.0. So in this case, like I said, we're going to cheat. Um, we are going to use um, the package called .NET, what was it again, the number? Four dot five dot two. Four dot five dot two. Now this is a spe special one because uh, normally a dot is not allowed in the package name or the package ID, but .NET has this as their naming convention, so the dot here is allowed. Um, but we need this ID to be the package that we are requiring, and this package has a dependency oh, as well on oh it doesn't have any dependencies this one okay in that case we can um, download this one as well if we want but we can also say we are go just going to install this as a dependency from there and in this case we are going to allow it to be a dependency without a version number because any version is a good version so we need to remove the comments here and we need to define that dependency as one of the dependencies. Now this, in theory, when we save those files, should be enough 
if the silent parameters are correct, um, to install Veeam agent for Windows. Um, we do not need the license TXT on our own repository. You can delete that one as well. We don't need a verification text. Um, you need that on the community repository if you are allowed to distribute the, the software. But for internal packages, it's not required to include the verification text. And these two are automatically be ignored in the package. So the next thing that we are going to do is we're going to back, back to our terminal. We're going to CD into the Veeam agent folder. And we are just going to run choco pack. This command will build based on the new spec file that we have, the new pack, the, the, the package that we can use to install the software. Um, and this created a basically a fancy zip file with all the data that we added in our metadata as well with the MSIs. And sh this should be able to install, um, assuming the silent parameters are correct. So if you want to try that, um, we're not going to, yeah, we, I, I'm going to do that, but you should not uh, right now. This is just this is just a test to see if the dependencies are working, or the silent parameters are working. Choco install. Veeam agent uh, source equals double quote dot semicolon chocolatey. Uh, we need the, the semicolon chocolatey here because we have a dependency on a package that's currently on the chocolatey community repository. Um, like I said, this is cheating because you should download it and upload it to your internal <laughs> repository. Use only your internal repository as your source. Um, but for the lack of time, we are using this one because we only have 15 minutes left for this, uh, this session. Um, and in theory, this should install my Veeam agent. Um, it was first start to install the, um, I'm going to accept all. Uh, install the dependency, um, which most likely will be finished in seconds. Oh, it, oh. it downloaded the theme agent for Windows on the community repository. Why does it do that? It shouldn't do that. It should. Uh, it should download it from here or use it from here. But oh, I know what's going on. I know what's going on. Um, I had to bump the version number to one extra because um, there was something wrong with the installation. Um, therefore, it sees that the version on the chocolate community version, a community repository is newer than the version that we have locally. So it will install that one from the community repository. Um, we are going to cheat on that one as well. Let's make this 51, which is not the version number, uh, but you should that use that. This is just a workaround for me right now uh, because the version on the community repository is a newer version. Uh, that's only probably for this version. Uh, uh, we're going to pack it again because we changed the version number. So we create a new package. And now we're going to run the command again. That was my mistake. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, all. So, like you see now, it uses the version of the file that's in the MSI that's in there and says it's not successful. And like I said before, 
you will probably get the 1603, which is the, the mother of all um, error codes. But lucky us, we installed it using a lock file. So we are going to open this specific uh, lock file. Uh, that's this one. With, yeah, Visual Studio Code. Let's open it in there. Uh, and we are going to look down here because probably it says here, uh, operation failed. And we need to scroll a bit up because there is something like error code number three and it will tell you what's going on. Third party license agreements you accepted. This was not in the documentation like that, but I assume so. So we need to add this one to our parameters here. And it's annoying because I would expect this one to be here, uh, Chris, right? Yeah, oh, it's not there. Okay, apparently there are some silent parameters that are not there. Um, let's assume they are pretty much the same like any other MSI nowadays. Uh, in like I said, I'm going to cheat a bit. I'm going to grab this one from my own repository in a different window real quick. Copy. Uh, this one. Edit, paste. Probably it will be something like this. Um, let me share that real quick with you guys in chat. Uh, I'm sorry. We save this file, run the pack again. Normally you would do this on a, on a separate machine in a separate environment in a testing environment uh, because you should not test on your development dev, development machine. Uh, we know you don't need to open it again. Um, pack it and then install it. And like I said, well, I'm on 64-bit machine, so it will install the 64-bit like we suggested, we asked them to do in the yeah, file 64. This looks a bit better. <laughs> And it looks like it's going to install right now. So the next thing that we are going to do, I'm, I'm using a new terminal, uh, PowerShell run as administrator. Um, is we are going to create a new one, new, and that will be Veeam agent December agent December chocolatey month. Um, I'm gonna shorten the name again a bit, um, make it descriptive for your environment, make it descriptive for the situation that you need. Um, but this creates an, again, a new package that will do, um, or that will be the, um, the one that's depending on the Veeam agent package. So in this case, our version number 
will be 1.0.0 because this is the first package and it hasn't it doesn't have a specific package uh, specific version and this one will depend on the oh, agent version <laughs> Six point one point zero point three five one as minimum version, and we don't need the other one. We should include a chocolate uninstall. We are not going to do that right now. Uh, And we don't need a before modify in this case. I know this, this, and we basically don't need anything below the tools there folder in this case. Um, in theory, we should create a chocolatey uninstall package of a chocolate uninstall, chocolatey uninstall PS1 file as well to roll back the changes that we do in this package. Um, but for now, we, we are keeping that out of scope. Um, but what we are going to do right now is we are going to grab this XML file that has been created by our Veeam Backup or Application Server, put this in our tools folder. Um, this contains all the bits and pieces that are required to uh, do our VBR uh, configuration including the IP address of our VBR server. And the only thing that we basically need to do in this one is execute um, start process. Uh, this process with some error arguments, right? <coughs> I need to make sure file path, main argument list, yeah. Main argument list. Um, I think it's right, it's something like this. Tactic. Uh, I think out from the top of my head. Uh, in theory, this should be everything that we need to configure our Veeam agent using this uh, XML file that we created. If I'm correct, I'm not 100% sure about the stock process um, one, but We, let's go into the folder. Uh, sorry. Choco pack. And if we've done everything correctly, and we say Choco, oh, uh, Choco install. Veeam agent dash uh, DCM, December chocolatey month, and make it this again, the dot. I cannot type. This is not my normal keyboard, so it's uh, a bit weird. Uh, oh, we don't need to force again. In theory, if we've done it correctly, they should configure our Veeam agent to yeah 
a parameter cannot be found that matches the parameter argument list. Excuse me. It's there, right? Okay. I'm blanking here. <laughs> get help. Oh, get help. Start process on line. Remember this commandlet because this really helps to uh, find the documentation real quick. I've done that. I mean, argument list. Okay. Maybe. Maybe, maybe it's I made a typo. Right? Sorry? I was going to say maybe it's the brackets. Yeah, maybe. It says it allows an array, but we can do it real quick like this as well. And creating an application is uh, a lot of try, try and error sometimes. Um, same goes with creating your own chocolatey packages. Um, let's see if this takes. This takes. Um, and if we done it correctly, it should show up real quick in our Veeam Backup or Application Server. However, we can cheat a bit by running this command. Um, you could include this one inside your. Oh, that needs an you could include this inside your choco install command um but if you if you don't have that within i think it's either 30 minutes or an hour the synchronization will take place anyway so the mm -hmm. thing now is exactly. just forcing it to happen right now exactly and if we've done it correctly it should show up inside here in a minute Maybe not. <laughs> Why is it not showing? Ah, it's not showing. It, it should show up in a couple of minutes. Uh, but basically what we have done now is we have configured a Veeam, a Veeam agent for Windows. Uh, where are you, Veeam agent? Veeam. Uh, Veeam agent for Windows. We should have configured it right now with our, uh, no, we don't want a license file, with our Veeam Backup Replication Server. It could be that it's because we didn't add a license file. That could be one of the reasons why it's not um, communicating with the server. Because it's, doing nothing. It should. Um, maybe that's the case. I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, but in theory, uh, unfortunately, it doesn't work as, as expected. But we are out of time to continue. Um, this should be the way to create your packages. Um, we have created a Veeam agent package with ins which install a piece of software. And we've created a Veeam agent DCM package, which in theory should have installed the configuration file. Um, maybe it synchronizes in a bit. Maybe um, it takes a bit more time. Um, they should be able to communicate uh, on my environment. Uh, but this is basically, in theory, what you need to do to uh, create packages. So, do you guys understand what I what we just did, and how we did it, and what we created right now? Yeah, it seems like it'd be a pretty handy thing once you start having lots of packages that need to be updating all the time, and you have everything set up. Mm. 
Yeah. I know what I appreciate is the framework, right? Um, Chocolate has <laughs> laid out this framework here so that you're able to plug in uh, the different variables like we saw today. In this case, we, we referred to Veeam, but I mean, anything, any Windows application that you can automate the install and uninstall and upgrade for. Uh, Chocolatey exactly. just provides this framework uh, with error handling built in that can be easily leveraged. Uh, and so thank you very much for sharing that. You're welcome. Um, and I think I'm, I'm probably butchering your name, Giraj asked if we all share this PowerPoint. Yes, we are going to share this PowerPoint presentation inside a blog post together with a link to the video um, later on. Yours? Yeah, it, uh, to be honest, it, it was a little bit hard to uh, to keep uh, keep uh, busy, uh, keep track with the uh, with the changes you made, but uh, I, it's it's a very useful tool. Um, yeah. If you're familiar with the uh, with the setup and and how to do uh, the, the the modifications, uh, but I totally see the the added value of of the of the solution for uh, mm -hmm. other things than only theme, of course. Yeah, this, this can be used for um, example, uh, like Gary does. Uh, he has a package to create, to configure his Git uh, 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 settings on his machine. That's one that lives in his, um, I'm, I think, uh, his GitHub organization. Uh, but that basically uses the Git commands to configure his preferred settings for his git commands. Sorry, you wanted to say something. Oh, I was just going to say I looked online at their uh, supported packages and everything you can do with it. And it looks like, yeah, your options are pretty much endless with this. So I'm going to spend a little more there time are... and practice. Yeah, there are. And this is basically life. Um, currently, a total of uh, 7,778 packages that are known good. Um, and uh, with out of a total of, uh, let, let's say, over 10,000 unique packages. If it's not in there, you probably don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> If it's not in there, there is a repository that you can uh, request uh, a package, or you can create <laughs> one and and submit it to the community repository and maintain it. Because there's a lot of software that's not already uh, that's not there yet. So new, um, new packages will get updated as as they come out then. Uh, when maintainers. Um, and maintain them and upload new packages, yes. Uh, because um, I've got a, a, a GitHub repository with, I think, uh, around uh, 199 packages that are um, uh, automatically updating and, and pushing into the Chocolatey community repository that runs a app fair script every, every hour or so. Very nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, this uh, concludes our uh, session and I want to thank everyone for joining us and uh, wish everyone a happy holidays and uh, a happy new year. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Maurice. Maurice.